Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Suman Tapriyal from Department of Biotechnology, Central University of Rajasthan. Today I am going to talk about the module Engineering Chimeric Antibody, Protein Engineering of Antibody Combining Sites, Replacement of FC Domain, Catalytic Antibodies, Abzymes from the paper Molecular Enzymology and Protein Engineering. As we know that uh, the antibody molecules little over a cent century ago, we have come to a long way in understanding the structure and function of these magic binders. And there is still long way ahead of us in deciphering the complete information which is logged in the repertoire of nearly 10 to the power 12 different variants. However, whatever partial knowledge the world has about them is already serving mankind a great deal. From research and development sector of healthcare sector, these molecules are serving as laboratory and clinical diagnostic agents. In addition to being an unlimited source of therapeutic agents for numerous disease conditions. A large number of therapeutic antibodies are finding their way to clinics. Almost half of all therapeutic proteins approved by FDA since 2009 have been monoclonal antibodies. This dominance of antibodies in protein therapeutics is because of some peculiar properties of antibody molecules, among which many reside in antigen combining site, while some reside in Ig constant Fc domain. In 1975, George Kohler and Caesar Milstein invented a means of cloning individual antibody molecules using hybridoma technology. It is since the experimental data dealing with structure and function of individual antibody molecules began to accumulate. The structure and sequence related information became available through various databases. Now this information burst improved or empowered scientists to draw conclusions and theories regarding the mechanism adapted by antibody molecules to fulfill their primary physiological obligation of specific recognition and binding of pathogenic antigens. Now this derived information has been now utilized to engineer therapeutic antibody molecules and antibody derived molecules to acquire either enhanced or novel characteristics. Now researchers for example develop trimmed antibody fragments for in vivo as well as in vitro use. For example, let me tell you single chain antibodies. Now this format consists of mere VH and VL domains, retains the antigen binding ability of the parent antibody molecule. Now these fragments showed improved pharmacokinetics for tissue penetration and hence found application in anti-tumor, anti-cancer uh, therapeutics. Now these uh, SCFEs devoid of constant domain have also been employed to serve as enzymes capable of catalyzing chemical as well as biochemical reactions. Now the objectives of this module are to study engineer chimeric, chimeric antibodies, rational approaches to humanization, uh, empirical approaches to humanization. Then second objective is protein engineering of antibody involving natural and engineer antibody fragments, antigen combining site. The third objective involves FC fusion proteins, the effector function enhancement strategies and their effector function diminution strategies. The fourth objective of this module is to discuss catalytic antibodies, their chemical reaction catalysis, biochemical reaction catalysis and their production strategies. Let me introduce antibody molecules to you. These are immune effector molecules secreted by B cells of our immune system. Uh, if you see uh, on the screen here, we have a modular structure of an immunoglobin monomer, <coughs> IgG to be very precise here. So a typical antibody or immunoglobulin molecule is composed of two antigen binding fragments which are called as FABs and which are linked via a flexible region called as hinge region to a constant FC region. So this structure is comprises two pairs of polyoptide chains. Each pair contains a heavy and a light chain or different sizes, which means that this molecule is a homodimer of a heterodimer. The heterodimer is composed of a light chain and a heavy chain. So the variable domains at the amino terminal end of the molecule are the domains 
that actually recognize and bind antigens through their complementary defining residues called as CDRs. The rest of the molecule is composed of constant domains. Now the FC portion of this Ig molecule serves to bind various effector molecules on the immune cells as well as molecules that determine the biodistribution of the antibody. Engineered chimeric antibodies. So let me uh, get this point that we need to engineer antibody molecules. So in order to do that, we would require antibody molecules in their clonal form where they are purified from the other types of antibodies. Such antibodies are called monoclonal antibodies. We all know that the hybridoma technology developed in 1975 by Kohler and Milstein actually paved the way for the generation of such monoclonal antibodies. So we are in position to generate uh, a clone of an antibody molecule where we can use afterward this antibody as a therapeutic molecule. So the mice hybridomas can produce the uh, antibodies which are specific to human antigens where they are targeting various uh, antigens looking after various different uh, conditions uh, can we produce from a reliable source of monoclonal antibodies. So uh, we are in a position to generate uh, therapeutic antibodies in mouse using mouse hybridomas. So the mouse hybridomas will be having, it's a technique where a myeloma cell is fused with an antibody generating uh, uh, cell. So the mouse origin antibodies, although will be reflecting a very good high affinity antibody to a human antigen, but at the same time being originated from a different source, different species, the uh, molecule cannot be as such used in humans for therapy. So mouse antibodies are excellent choice of molecules for laboratory as well as clinical diagnostic purposes. But as uh, long as the case is for therapeutics, such antibodies elicit human anti-mouse antibody response in humans, which lead to severe immune reactions in humans. So these monoclonal antibodies are actually poor therapeutic agents as far as humans are concerned. So to tackle this point, the very first measure taken in this direction was that the constant domains of the mouse monoclonal antibodies were replaced with human domains. So as we have seen that the mouse origin monoclonal antibodies produces HAMA in patients, that is human anti-mouse antibodies in humans. So to reduce the immunogenicity of these chimeric antibodies, which were in the first place were generated in order to reduce the immunogenicity of a complete mouse antibody are where the uh, CDRs of the animal antibodies were grafted into human antibody framework region. So the first trial of replacing the entire constant domain uh, or the constant regions of an antibody of a mouse antibody with humans actually did not work as therapeutic agent. So to further improve such an antibody as a therapeutic agent and to reduce its immunogenicity, these chimeric, the chimeric antibodies were generated where instead of uh, grafting of complete variable domain, only the CDRs of the animal antibody were grafted onto the human antibody framework. CDR is the region, hypervariable region, which actually contributes to the binding of an antibody to its antigen. So the CDR grafting, what it involves, so for doing a CDR grafting of a mouse antibody, we need to define the regions which determine the specificity of the donor murine antibody because that is the region that we are going to use as the donor fragment. Secondly, because we are going to graft that part into another uh, antibody sequence, we need to locate, we need to decide the source of a human sequence that will serve as the FR or the framework region donor for that antibody. So the selection of residues 
outside the specificity defining regions is also done which is important for CDI grafting as a method because sometimes after grafting even CDI some back mutation in the grafted antibody are required for improving its binding activity. So uh, after this uh, action was done it was seen that even the xenogenic CDRs of the humanized antibodies evoked anti-idiotypic response in patients which means that even though the whole antibody is of human origin the mere CDRs of mouse origin were able to generate an idiotypic response in the patients. So again to minimize this step or to reduce the immunogenicity of the xenogenic CDRs in the chimeric antibody instead of CDRs a method was developed where the SDRs were grafted. SDRs are actually the CDR residues which are involved in making contact with the antigen. So this CDR grafting was then taken over to one higher level where the CDR uh, SDRs derived from the CDRs were grafted for reduced immune response in human or reduced HAMA of such chimeric antibodies in humans. So such an example, uh, we can see an example here, there is an antibody uh, where the SDRs were grafted in that antibody and it exhibited 2.5 fold higher affinity which is a desirable uh, uh, characteristic of the antibody with enhanced virus neutralizing activity and lesser immunogenicity than the CDR grafted uh, antibody fragment. Variable domain resurfacing uh, under the topic of rational uh, engineering of antibodies where we have till now discussed the CDR uh, grafting, SDR grafting. So variable domain resurfacing is recently used or uh, it is being used more, more often nowadays as a strategy to change or to modify the antibody molecules to humanize them and to reduce their immune response in the uh, human hosts. Now this strategy involves a reorganization of the surface residues of the variable domain. Now we know that the variable domain of an antibody molecule is the one which will be involved in antigen binding and the residues which are there in the variable domains which binds which makes the antigen binding site contribute to the antigen recognition. Till now we were changing the CDRs and the actual contact making residues of the antigen binding site of an antibody molecule by replacing them with the uh, an animal uh, counterpart into the human FR and constant domains as the background. Now this strategy actually involves the uh, antibody uh, uh, amino acid molecules or amino acids which are surrounding the active uh, or you can surrounding you can say the variable domain. So the reorganization of the solvent accessible amino acids which are exposed on the surface of the variable domain are the target of modification in this particular strategy. The relative solvent accessibility distribution of amino acid residues in murine and human antibody FV regions have been found to be conserved up to 98%. Now what it means that the positioning of amino acids is conserved up to 98%, uh, their pattern is conserved till 98% fidelity but the types of amino acids are not conserved across the species. So the usage of amino acid residues at a particular position which might be conserved as a position for a surface exposed amino acid does not necessarily contain the same amino acid. Now this change of the pattern of usage of different amino acids on the surface actually give rise to the specific nature, specific structure or specific reactivity of an variable domain. Now this, this as being targeted through this material, uh, this method, so the non-conserved amino acid usage as I said leads to the uh, change or leads to the uh, environment which makes one antibody different from the other antibody. Now the the method involves the change of these amino acid residues and development of a 
library involving all those mutants or vari variations at particular position. And after changing them from that library, one has to screen the, uh, the befitting uh, variable domain resurfaced antibody. Now, this particular method is generally utilized with already grafted antibodies. For example, let us take an example of an antibody which already has its CDRs replaced into a human background, which means the constant domain or FR of humans have the murine CDR residues. To further make this antibody work as a more humanized antibody, the surface uh, pattern of antibodies uh, of the uh, human uh, uh, variable domain is further changed so that the CDR which is grafted into a human background uh, mixes well and produces lesser immunity. We have one example uh, towards this. The single chain antibody V5B2 which is an antipathogenic prion antibody has been demonstrated to bind uh, Bind has been demonstrated have to have binding affinity and specificity of the original murine antibody and this antibody has been humanized utilizing variable domain resurfacing. Antibody humanization empirical methods. So as we have seen that we can improve a therapeutic antibody molecule with regards to its uh, HAMA response in humans by directed metagenesis or by directed method where we can selectively change the structure and the format of the antibody. There are many empirical methods available which are used by the uh, humanization of antibodies which are low on structural data about their antigen binding site. So if we do not have a clear cut information of the paratope of an antibody, there are methods which do not look at the structural details and they involve empirical uh, strategy for the selection or humanization of an antibody. So let us have a look at a few popular methods. The one is FR library approach, framework region library approach. In this, the uh, residue variance uh, in the FR of human light and heavy chain sequences are introduced. So the FR region is uh, targeted here where few selected residues are being changed and a library of such chimeric antibodies is generated. And then the this library is selected on the basis of their uh, activity against the specific antigen. Other than this library approach, we have a guided selection method. This method is unique in its uh, in its way of outcome that uh, an, a humanized antibody using this method is actually completely human. It is uh, no longer a chimeric antibody. So this is a guided selection where a rodent or animal VH uh, variable uh, chain is used against a library of a human variable light chain. So we are having the rodent VH chain with us and we are combining it with a library of human variable light chains resulting in another library of ant uh, antibodies where the VH is common and the library is on the background of variable chains. And this library is then selected on the basis of antigen binding. So the construct or the chimeric antibody here which shows the highest antigen binding is then panned against or is then uh, um, put with a library of human VH chains where uh, it's a library. So now VL uh, light chain variable domain which was selected from the previous method is being further utilized for generating a next step of library. Now here the VL and VH both the domains are of human origin. Again the library which is being uh, screened on the basis of antigen binding activity. So at the end of this procedure, one is having a complete humanized antibody uh, which have the antigen binding capacity as well. The third method which I would like to discuss with you here is FR shuffling approach. Now FR library approach and FR shuffling approach are having a very slight difference that in FR shuffling, the complete FR of the human sequences 
in the form of a library is fused with the non-human CDRs. So the framework region of human antibodies is combined with the non-human CDRs and the FR is of uh, germline origin of human. So you have a library uh, of various framework regions which are uh, possible and the CDRs are being uh, uh, allowed to bind uh, with them and, and such a library is then again screened against the antigen antigen by showing the antigen binding. So the highest, uh, the, the uh, clones which show high binding to uh, antibody molecules originating from such a library is then selected for further application. So let's have a look at a few examples which are uh, of the antibodies which are chimeric or humanized therapeutic antibodies which are presently in clinical use and have been generated using empirical methods of uh, antibody humanization. So you can see here an example where a fully human antibody is used for osteoporosis uh, named as denosumab. Then we have uh, Soliris, it's a humanized IgG2 antibody which targets the complement protein C5 and it is uh, used in to reduce the hemolysis condition. And similarly, we have the example of Campeth, Rituzan and Herceptin which are chimeric antibodies uh, generated and are in, uh, in the clinical use FDA approved antibodies. Protein engineering of antibody molecules. Now let us look at the protein uh, of this antibody molecule and how this complete uh, molecule can be engineered into smaller fragment. So the recombinant monoclonal antibodies these days are generated and they can be dis di dissected into minimal binding fragments. As we know that we can separate the FC portion of an antibody utilizing various uh, enzymes. Uh, we can separate the FAB also and recombinant molecular antibodies can be generated depending upon the truncated gene length, uh, whichever size one would like to express it. So the recombinant monoclonal antibodies can be dissected at the genetic level to form minimal binding fragments. Further on, the size of these antibodies because it's smaller, sometimes leads to decrease in the uh, antigen binding activity. So these smaller fragments, smaller size truncated antibody fragments can be made to rebuild into multivalent high avidity reagents. So on one hand, we can generate a truncated smaller antibody, for example, a single chain antibody or only an uh, VH fragment where uh, you are having the one binding site or one uh, binding arm of an antibody molecule. So because the number of antigen binding uh, arms have reduced, it sometimes leads to the reduction in binding activity of the antibodies. So there are means by which one can allow these recombinant truncated molecules binding fragments to rebuild themselves into multivalent uh, uh, molecules where they can have more than one binding sites. So this increases their affinity and uh, avidity because of the avidity. So now these uh, recombinant monoclonal uh, antibody fragments which have the capacity to bind the antigen can further be fused with a range of molecules to further enhance their applicability. For example, an antibody, single chain antibody molecule can be fused with a desired enzyme. For example, it has been seen with product therapy. We will discuss about this point a uh, little later. Then one can fuse these single chain antibodies which has antigen binding activity intact in them to bind with toxins as it is being under use in anti-cancer therapy. Then subsequently, these antibody molecules can be fused with viruses and uh, it, it is being used in gene therapy. Then antibodies can also be fused with liposomes filled with various drug molecules and this is being used in drug delivery systems. And along with that, it can be fused with biosensors and fusion of such antibody molecules to biosensor can 
be uh, used as a real time detection of the target molecules so to sum this up we are we are now in a position to generate various formats of antibody molecules which have the capacity to bind antigen and then these smaller forms of antibody molecules can further be derivatized to target various uh, antigens or various target molecules in humans for therapy here is a schematic representation of different antigen formats that we just discussed in our last section uh, we have a model of igg complete antibody uh, to begin with and we can see that nowadays antibody molecules can be expressed in as smaller unit as a vh domain or a vl domain then the monomeric forms where the single antigen uh, antigen binding site is being employed are scfv single chain antibody and vh domains now as i said uh, that one has to increase the uh, binding avidity of these molecules so the formats of bis uh, specific scfvs dia bodies fab where the uh, number of binding sites can be increased more than one which is further leading to their higher avidity binding to the antigen uh, can be seen a fab molecule you can see where the uh, antigen binding domain the variable domain is having the constant domain the next constant domain also in it then we have a fab 2 by specific uh, molecule where one can actually combine uh, two different antigen specificities in a single fab molecule such a uh, reaction can be or such a characteristic can be introduced in a bis scfe molecule where one scfe molecule which is joined to another scfe molecule can be of different antigen specificities similarly dibodies can also be generated of the similar nature then we have tri bodies mini bodies which can be generated tetra bodies where uh, the binding sites have been increased to suit the increased avidity of the antibody molecules uh, let us have a look at the uh, current scenario of antibody fragments which are derived from which are smaller fragments of the antibody molecules which are underused so antibody derived fragments as we said that further engineered to enhance uh, affinity stability and improved in vitro pharmacokinetics so once we have an antibody in a recombinant form in a smaller form we can do uh, a lot of uh, changes uh, at the or mutagenesis at the genetic level which can increase its affinity stability and smaller molecules as we know show uh, better pharmacokinetics in the human body so many antibody fragments which are engineered into multivalent uh, molecules Uh, show uh, with increase avidity show increase avidity and slower dissociation rates so here are some examples so fragment type as you see fab chimeric uh, it's a fab chimeric where the specific target gp2b and uh, it is at the fda it's an fda approved fragment and it is used in the cardiovascular disease then we have a single chain fv humanized antibody against complement c5 it is in uh, phase 2 and 3 used in coronary artery bypass and similarly we have a uh, lot other formats approved by fda like dia body uh, mini bodies scfe dimeric fc fc murine human chimera uh, mini antibodies bio specific scfe antibodies so all these formats are there which are being used as therapeutic molecules uh, targeting different uh, clinical conditions we are continuing with protein engineering of antibody molecules let us look at the molecular engineering methods which involve antigen combining site the antigen combining site is actually contri contributed by the variable domain of the antibody but the real contact of the antibody to the antigen is made through the residues which are present in the cdr so the molecular engineering actually targets if we are engineering the antigen combining site of an antibody is actually targeting the modification or, or it is targeting the biochemical and biophysical characteristic of the antibody so the such uh, modifications can be achieved 
by targeted mutagenesis as well as a random mutagenesis. So, in cases where we have a prototype of, of an antibody whose antibody uh, binding specificity or binding activity has to be improved uh, by having the structural information about that antibody one can utilize and by directed mutagenesis can mutate the, uh, the prototype antibody at specific regions and can modulate its activity. So, site directed mutagenesis as well as directed mutagenesis on the basis on the background of the CDR as well as the FR region of the antibody can result into a modified antibody, engineered antibody with higher uh, characteristics of higher order. On the other hand, the uh, in case of we do not have the structural information required for site directed or directed mutagenesis, one can improve the uh, binding activity of an antibody molecule by employing uh, random mutagenesis. And in such a case, the uh, mutagenesis can be uh, produced by error prone PCR. So, the mutants can be generated in the form of a library and which can further be screened for the highest uh, affinity binder by using the screening stringent screening methods. We are still continuing with our molecular engineering antigen combining side. As uh, I was discussing with you that the random as well as site directed mutagenesis can modulate the uh, antigen binding or can modulate the variable domain uh, of the antigen binding site. Now, we know that the CDRs are surrounded by framework regions and it is well known that uh, they mainly maintain the three dimensional topography of the CDRs, the FR regions. So, but in some cases or in many cases it has been seen that the residues from the FR make direct contact with the antigen. So, in both the cases the random as well as specific mutagenesis can target the molecules in uh, the uh, CDRs as well as framework regions. So, by engineering the CDRs or the FRs, one can modulate the specificity, affinity and overall stability of an antibody molecule. Now, using similar uh, molecular engineering methods, one can actually change or one can modulate or modify the specificity of antibodies. So, what this sentence implies here that on the basis of a prototype antibody which, which is having a specificity for a particular antigen can be genetically modified to identify and bind actually a separate antigen. The uh, point of uh, caution here would be the screening strategy. Uh, in such a case, the screening strategy has to be very carefully decided so that you are not uh, screening the cross reactants uh, or you are not screening the antibody molecules which are generally or merely showing cross reactivity. Now, on the other hand, the effective functions and the stability of the antibody molecules can also be enhanced by utilizing uh, site directed as well as random uh, methods. So, I would like to quote here a few examples. So, in around 2000, Border and colleague, his colleague reported uh, till today's highest 10,000 fold increase in affinity of an anti fluorescein variant. So, it is uh, with example reported that by carrying out the mutations or carrying or engineering the antigen combining site, one can actually have the, the higher affinity or one can actually modify the uh, binding activity of an antibody. In this particular case, uh, out of the 10 mutations, 6 mutations were carried out in the CDR region, whereas 4 mutations were carried out in the FR region. So, combining the modification done in the CDR as well as modification done in the FR regions contributed to this uh, very significant increase in the affinity of this antibody. Similarly, uh, Olivier and uh, colleagues in 2005 uh, reported the improved specificity 
of recognition of an anti progesterone monoclonal antibody by utilizing both site directed mutagenesis methods as well as RN prone PCR methods. FC fusion proteins. Let me begin this topic with giving you one analogy to this condition of antibody and that is to the neem tree. Since we have been growing up, we heard one uh, saying or proverb which says that uh, neem tree is a tree where every part of that tree can be utilized for the benefit of humans. Now, antibody molecules, although its antigen binding site carries the uh, activity which it requires for binding, the every single part of antibody uh, can be utilized for the benefit of therapeutics or human uh, medicine. So, we see here the, the FC fusion proteins are the proteins where the FC region of antibodies have been fused to a non-antibody molecule. Uh, in, an, an, in an antibody molecule also, we have seen that you generate generally a smaller truncated form of an antigen binding site uh, involving only the variable domain. So, a variable domain for example, a SCFE single chain antibody molecule can also be fused to the FC a part of an antibody to provide it with all the other uh, characteristics of FC region uh, of the antibody. So, what is that FC region actually provides? So, FC domain of the uh, antibodies actually facilitates the recycling of antibodies and they salvages them from endosomal degradation. So, an antibody having an FC domain at its C terminal actually is uh, giving rise to its higher uh, uh, half life, its higher half life or survival in the circulation. So, IgFC fused to a non Ig molecule actually confers antibody like properties to it, which are directed through the FC region. So, FC fusion proteins actually is not wrong to say they enjoy the uh, properties of antibody as far as the salvage, uh, salvation of their uh, salvaging of their uh, molecule longer half life and sometimes the effector function uh, through the FC domain uh, have been enjoyed by these fusion proteins. So, uh, FC fusion uh, proteins they actually also increase the expression and secretion of these fusion proteins and we know that the purification of antibodies is performed through the protein A columns. So, any antibody or therapeutic molecule which is fused with the FC region of an antibody can be purified using these columns. Now, along with that, the uh, FC fusion enables chimeric proteins and drug to modulate the downstream effector functions as I said by mediated by the FC receptors which are form, found on various cell surfaces. The effector function enhancement of FC fused proteins. As we have seen already that the FC region of antibody molecules is also of very high clinical or therapeutic importance. And uh, antibody or non-antibody molecules which have been fused with FC regions of an antibody molecule actually partially gathers the characteristic of antibody molecules. So, we know that the FC region of antibody molecules are involved in effector functions where they uh, by binding to their receptors on various types of immune cells actually carry out or uh, bring about the uh, effector functions of, for example, cytotoxicity. So, to understand this, let me uh, talk about such uh, effector function first, which can be enhanced uh, to match the requirement of a particular case. So, the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity, this phenomena is actually because of the FC region of antibody binding to its receptors on an immune cell. Let us take the example of cancer cells. The therapeutic antibodies, anti-cancer antibodies actually after binding to the cancer antigen on a cancer cell can bind to their FC receptors on the NK cells. And this binding of antigen antibody to the uh, cancer antigen as well as to the FC receptor on NK cells actually brings about 
the destruction of the cancer cell by the natural killer cells. So this is called, uh, this scenario is the antigen dependent cell mediated uh, cytotoxicity. Now this effect can be enhanced by modification uh, at the uh, genetic level of an antibody fused FC region. So modification in this function may be achieved by engineering the amino acid sequence in the FC domain in order to make the binding affinity of FC domain uh, enhanced for its receptor on various uh, cell types. For example, in our uh, example case, FC receptors on the NK cells. Now, the modification of this function can also be bring about by defucylation of the N-linked oligosaccharides on the FC regions. So, one uh, by uh, removing the fucosyl moieties from the N, uh, from the FC region can also enhance their binding to their receptors. Such modifications improve therapeutic potential of clinically important FC fusion proteins similar to monoclonal antibodies. So this uh, modification or engineering can be brought about in a therapeutic monoclonal antibody as well as it can be brought about in a non-antibody fused FC molecule, therapeutic molecule, which now have the power to uh, bring about the effector functions like an antibody molecule. In continuation of effector function enhancement, we are going to discuss here a second uh, type of effector uh, function, which is called as complement dependent cytotoxicity. Now here, uh, antigens bound by the antibody interact with the complement component C1Q and it leads to the uh, activation of a cascade of complement uh, system and this triggers the cell death through the complement cascade. So here we see that again the FC portion of an antibody which is already bound to its antigen on let's say a pathogen or on a cancerous cell can bring about the destruction of the uh, cell or the target through CDC. So there are various anti-cancer monoclonal antibodies which employ this mechanism. So the antibody FC regions uh, are specifically uh, modified so that they can bring about this type of uh, cytotoxicity in the target uh, cancerous cells. Now, although this activity has yet not been employed in FC fusion therapeutics where the FC uh, molecule has been uh, fused to a non-antibody molecule, but uh, the reason for this which has been predicted by various uh, scientists is that the FAB actually contributes to the interaction of the intact IgG with the IC1Q uh, or the complement uh, component. So since in non-antibody FC fused therapeutics, FAB is absent, it has been uh, uh, suggested that because of the absence of FAB, this thing has not been seen yet uh, with the uh, such therapeutic molecules. So, uh, hence, one can enhance the affinity of FC for its receptors or various effector cells and hence can modulate various effector functions. So, this is what is called as the enhancement of the infection effector function where we are allowing the therapeutic molecules to increase their activity towards their receptors. Uh, effector function enhancement... Uh, using FC uh, proteins, FC regions of antibody molecules. So in addition to having uh, enhanced activity uh, of uh, the molecules, therapeutic molecules by having a higher affinity FC regions fused to antibody or non-antibody molecules, the FC fusion proteins are also uh, better vaccine candidates. Now, the, the design of FC fusion vaccines actually is focused on employing different FC domains to identify uh, FCRs on various APCs, which means the vaccine molecule is uh, intact there for 
target of or for immunization or for stimulation of the immune response but the fc region of such a molecule vaccine molecule is actually targeted is also targeted to the fc receptors which are present on various antigen presenting cells which is a desirable uh, requirement of an vaccine molecule because for stimulating an immune response the antigen molecule has to be presented uh, by the apcs so uh, in this uh, particular uh, case most of the apcs as we know express uh, fc receptors uh, for uh, fc gamma receptors for example r1 r2 a r2 b and fc epsilon r1 fc epsilon r2 fc rl4 and fc rl5 receptors so uh, hence we know that these fc regions of igg and the fc uh, fragments from ige can serve as the uh, fusion partner for making a vaccine candidate molecule for their uh, antigen delivery uh, to the various apcs now igm molecule also can be used as the fc donor for production of vaccine candidates because igm antibody molecule is endowed naturally to form polymers we know that the anti igm molecules in circulation or extracellular environment exist as a pentamer so uh, the multimerization of factor provided by the igm molecule fc region fragments to the vaccine molecule have an effect of adjuvant so igm fc which is also able to bind to the complement uh, component and it is able to bind to tripartite motif containing protein 21 also so uh, the igm antibody fc region is also a, a very important fc fusion partner for such apl application igm in addition to all these factors engages unique receptors other than the fc receptors engages unique receptors on b and t cells and nk cells and it stimulates a memory response required uh, by the efficacious vaccine so uh, as far as vaccine candidates are concerned the fusion uh, of an igm fc region to the uh, vaccine antigen Uh, is actually helping the stimulation of memory responses which is a desired requirement of any vaccine candidate so the effector functions uh, can be utilized to make a different type of molecule uh, where the molecule activity is enhanced by its fusion to an fc molecule effector function diminution now we have seen the effect of Uh, enhancement of effector functions by engineering or by fusing an fc region of various igg ige or igm antibodies to uh, various therapeutic molecules but now uh, the requirement of enhancement of in the effector function is not always the desired outcome required in every case so in many therapeutic uh, conditions or many clinical conditions the enhancement of effector function is actually uh, is non desirable for example the uh, adcc and cdc effector functions are not required in conditions where the neutralization of pathogenic molecule is being targeted for example one is targeting cytokines in a human uh, patient so neutralization of a pathogenic molecule would require only the antigen binding uh, uh, fragment of an antibody and uh, or the therapeutic molecule and it would not require it is undesirable to actually stimulate the effector function so as we know that igg1 is uh, a very common and uh, for most fc donor for such fusion proteins uh, igg1 uh, has a moderate to high affinity for fc gamma receptors on various effector cells and so uh, such a fc donor is non desirable in this kind of uh, 
situation. On the other hand, IgG2 and IgG4 subclasses have lower affinity for FC gamma receptors. And hence, uh, to diminish the effect of functions, FC, or FC portion of these IgG2 and IgG4 are used as the desirable fusion partners. Let me discuss here one example of such a fusion where the glucagon-like peptide 1 was fused to human IgG2. Now, human IgG2 uh, fusion to a glucagon-like peptide would enhance the uh, half-life in circulation for the glucagon-like peptide 1. But at the same time, it avoids the unwanted immunogenicity by the in the form of effector functions. So, uh, fusion to IgG2 FC region avoided unwanted immunogenicity of this fusion protein and showed superior therapeutic and pharmacological property in a mouse model of type 1 diabetes. Catalytic antibodies. Uh, as the name suggests, these are the antibody molecules capable of catalyzing reactions. So, in 1966, Slobin demonstrated for the first time that the hydrolysis of orthonitrophenyl esters can be brought about using antibodies. So, the antibodies in that reaction were used as catalysts. And uh, with subsequent work in this direction, by 1969, a hypothesis has emerged uh, about these enzymes that uh, such enzyme can be produced by employment of antibodies which are raised uh, or one can raise such antibodies against transition state analog uh, heptin. So one has to identify a heptin small molecule which resembles the transition state of the reactant uh, which is to be converted into a product and an antibody generated or raised against such a mimicking heptin can produce antibodies which function as enzymes for such a reaction. Now, this marked the beginning of production of a new class of antibodies come enzymes and the name was given was abzymes. So now, uh, for example, 32CB, uh, 32C2 uh, was the first commercially available abzyme which was endowed with high level of substrate specificity and subsequently uh, we now have myriad list of uh, reactions which can be catalyzed using uh, antibodies. Antibody catalysts for chemical reactions. Now, as we know that since 1969, antibodies capable of catalyzing numerous chemical reactions have been developed till today. I would like to cite few reactions over here. Uh, for example, we have antibodies which can catalyze proton transfer redox reactions, one which can catalyze estral hydrolysis, uh, enantioselective reactions, amide hydrolysis, antibodies can bring about beta elimination, amide bond formation, trans esterification, decarboxylation, photo-induced cleavage, photo-induced dimerization, biomolecular amide formation and diel selders reactions etc. Now in majority of these examples we see that uh, chemical transformation has been occurring and an antibody molecule is bringing about a chemical transformation in a reactant. If we see Diels elder reaction, there is an antibody example. The name of the antibody is 39A11, which was generated against a bicycle octane heptane. It catalyzes the Diels elder reaction. So here in this particular reaction, a diene reacts with dienophile to produce cyclohexene. Now, this case suggested where two reactants are being used, this suggested that abzymes are not restricted to just chemical transformations. Uh, they can actually bring about the catalysis of a reaction where uh, other type of chemical reactions, uh, more than one uh, chemical reactants are involved. So, uh, the antibody catalysts can bring about the fusion of two reactants to produce product. 
and can catalyze other type of reactions as well. Now, uh, in addition to this, immobilization of these enzymes on different platforms enhances their stability under organic solvent environments. So, one can subject uh, an enzyme when the uh, surrounding is of organic solvent. Uh, one can immobilize these enzymes and can enhance their stability and can still bring about the cat uh, catalyze and they can still uh, catalyze the reaction. For example, immobilization of lipase like enzymes to an inorganic support uh, had its activity as well as spe uh, stereospecificity retained and the enzyme uh, successfully was able to carry out the reaction. Antibody catalysts, biochemical reactions and therapeutics. Now, abzymes, in addition to carrying out uh, purely chemical reactions, are now have found application in catalyzing biochemical reaction and serving as therapeutics. So, therapeutic catalytic antibodies are used to convert, a, for example, a pro-drug into an active compound. Now, the strategy here is that the pro-drug is in its inactive form. And once that inactive product has been administered in, in the patient, afterwards, uh, injection of a catalytic antibody can site specifically cleave the product near its target site and can bring about the uh, uh, required uh, reaction at the site. So, uh, let us take the example of a catalytic, such catalytic antibody. Uh, 38C2, which I had uh, talked about in my uh, introduction to catalytic antibodies, which has shown the uh, highest uh, activity till today. So, this catalytic antibody actually delivers product form of insulin, uh, which is an organoinsulin, specifically recognizes and catalyzes cleaves, actually aldol terminated linkers in this product. So, here insulin has been flanked by uh, aldol terminated linkers which can be recognized by this antibody to be cleaved in the product producing a native insulin in, in vivo. So, catalytic antibodies are increasingly being used for specific targeting of product molecules to cancerous cells. So, it has found a, a application in anti-cancer drug therapies. So, such catalytic antibodies which are being used in treatment of cancer have two distinct binding sites. So, one binding site can target or bind the tumor antigen on the cancer cell, whereas the second uh, site or the second active site of the antibody can catalyze the cleavage or activation of a product molecule. So, we have a 38C2 HPMA copolymer conjugate as an example for this where the uh, product drug uh, which is a dimeric uh, uh, or bispecific uh, antibody molecule for targeting cancer cells. In continuation of antibody catalysts as biochemical uh, reaction and therapeutics. So, let us continue uh, the discussion of catalytic therapeutics, catalytic antibodies as therapeutics. So, in addition to have an application in anti-cancer therapy, catalytic antibodies can be used as antibacterial and antiviral agents. Now here, the specificity or activity of the antibodies can be directed towards the coat peptides or carbohydrates of viruses as well as bacteria. So the catalytic antibody which can cleave which can catalyze the cleavage of the coat peptides or carbohydrates can actually lead to the uh, damage or uh, killing of the target pathogens. Anti-HIV proteolytic antibodies, for example, are raised to carry out catalytic cleavage of GP120. It is clear that GP120 is the antigen of HIV which makes the contact with the CD4 cells. So, the catalytic antibodies which are capable of targeting GP120 and cleaving it can actually act as the anti-HIV uh, catalytic antibody. In addition to these applications, uh, catalytic antibodies have application in treating genetic diseases as well. 
so in a particular case let's say there is a uh, mutation in a particular uh, gene which leads to uh, absence of a uh, important enzyme in the body so enzymes can replace the function of a missing extracellular enzyme to treat its deficiency so we see here that um, antibody molecules have as catalysts also have the uh, application as therapeutic molecules and they are being tried out in various different fields uh, for their application production of catalytic antibodies how these catalytic antibodies are generated the very first generation of abzymes or catalytic antibodies were generated using labor some intensive procedures where the antibodies were raised against the transition state analogs in mice followed by screening of the specific activity it was a time consuming process so abzymes selected by these methods generally turn out to have low turnover rates as well so nowadays we have alternate methods to overcome these laborious methods and new generation method involve cat elisa as the uh, cat, uh, uh, for the production of catalytic antibodies so this cat elisa actually allows screening of the abzymes directly in hybridoma growth medium itself because of it the screening of a larger number of clones become possible and an efficient uh, screening uh, is done using this particular method now what happens during this method is that a substrate protein conjugate is immobilized on the mycotiter plate subsequently an antibody catalyzes conversion the antibody is added catalytic antibody is added which catalyzes the conversion of the substrate into a product or release of the product and then the released product is det detected by the elisa using anti product antibodies so this is a elisa come a screening method where the catalytic antibodies can be selected out of a uh, library very efficiently now we have one more method or you can say alternate method for production of catalytic antibodies and that is where the antibodies can be raised against the enzymes active site so if we have the target enzyme whose activity we want to replace with an abzyme we would use the enzyme and generate antibodies against its antigen binding or substrate binding site now this is followed by the generation of a second set of antibodies which is elicited against the antigen binding site of the first set idiotypic antibodies so which means that the first set of antibody which were generated against the enzyme active site have the complementary structure uh, selected onto the antibody the second round of antibodies which are generated against the paratope of the first generation antibody actually re uh, establishes the uh, topology of enzyme active site so the second set of anti id antibodies mimic actually the original enzyme active site so let us take an example here monoclonal antibody igm 9 a8 was generated as an anti idiotype of ae2 monoclonal antibody known inhibitor it's a known inhibitor of acetyl choline esterase and it displays the estrolytic activity as a normal uh, enzyme does so students let us now summarize what we have learned in this module so far so modification of antibody affinity specificity stability its shapes and sizes using molecular engineering methods have produced a repertoire of molecules having application in research and healthcare sectors secondly the chimeric and humanized therapeutic molecular antibodies and derived molecules are in use for treatment of various types of ailments for example various types of cancers cardiovascular diseases autoimmune disorders systematic lupus erythematosus macular degradation degeneration and asthma fc fusion proteins behave like antibody molecules with respect to the effector functions so we have learned for example the binding of these fusion proteins to the fc uh, receptors recycles the proteins and turn and in turn increases their plasma half life binding of 
these molecules to the FC receptors on immune cells induces effective functions and hence their efficacy, for example, in the case of vaccines. The antibodies are also being used as enzymes for various chemical and biochemical reactions. So, by specific antibodies with antigen binding and product, uh, product activation activity are being used in cancer therapies. Thank you.